Good morning, ladies. Uh, let's go ahead and get started with lesson 28 of your handwriting. Uh, we are doing J's, S's, the word Jesus, and the word Samuel, okay? So you may go ahead and work on those. Um, pause the video to work on it until you're ready for math, okay? So if we're ready for math, we are going to try to do this, okay? We're just going to try it. If you get it wrong, it's okay. Um, I'm just going to give you points just for trying because I didn't give you those geometry blocks this week. So it's just one page, front and back. The first one, it says, circle two shapes that can combine to make the shape on the left. So looking at these shapes, if I were to draw a line right here, you see the two shapes that there would be? There would be this shape and there would be this shape. So I would circle those two shapes. So try to do that as we go on here. Um, the next is this little house looking shape. What two shapes do you see there? Maybe try to draw a line, see if you can identify those shapes. Next, number three, the same thing. Circle the two shapes that you could see. Out of these ones, which ones could combine to make this? Next, draw lines to show how the shapes on the left combine to make the new shape. So exactly what I was telling you before. How could you combine these shapes to make a new one? Well, I could make that rectangle like this, right? Can you see that? Oops. So I drew that line to show the rectangle, and then I need to draw a line to show how these two fit together. So I would draw a line right down the middle there to show how those could fit together. Now let's go to the back. On the back it says, which shapes can combine to make this new shape? And they show you a circle. So which two of these shapes could combine? Not like this one and this one, but you see how each of them have two shapes. This one's two, this is two, this is two, this is two. Which one of these could make this circle? Go ahead and mark that bubble. Next, we're doing the picture graph. So use the picture graph to answer the, each question. So we have swimming, we have dancing, we have drawing. So each child chose their favorite activity. How many more children chose drawing than swimming? See if you remember how to do that. How many more children chose drawing than swimming? Number three, how many children chose dancing and swimming? So dancing plus swimming, how many children? Mark that. Now when you're done with that, we're going to go on to our reading A to Z quizzes. So you have been reading your book all week. Um, you've been doing the worksheets. Now it's time for our comprehension quiz. So um, let's go ahead and start with Elena, with The Boy Who Cried Wolf. So you're going to have your name and your date. Now, Elena, which event happens first in the story? A, the wolf chases the sheep away. B, the boy plays a trick. Or C, no one comes to help. Which one of those happened first? Number two, why did the author write the story? A, to persuade people to play tricks. B, to inform people about wolves, or C, to teach a lesson about telling the truth. Number three, this story takes place in a field. A field is an example of a A, setting, B, character, or C, plot. Number four, which event happens last in the story? A, the boy cries, help, wolf. B, the boy learns a lesson, or C, the people run to help. Which one of those happened to last? Number five, which word means people who say untrue things on purpose? A, liars. B, tricks. C, wolves. Number six, this is your extended response. So I want you to look at the pictures on pages 11 and 12 of your book. And then I want you to write on the back of this right here, how you think the boy feels based on those two pictures, okay? I want you to write what he, you think he feels. And then that's it for Elena. So now we're going to move on to Lily's. Okay, Lily, go ahead and write your name and date. And then we're going to start with number one. What is the setting of this story? Is it in a, a in a bedroom, B, a closet, C, a bathroom, or D, a dad's room? Number two. Which word best describes Simon at the beginning of the story? A, tired, B, happy, C, scared, D, lonely. Number three, Simon hates bedtime because A, he is afraid of the lion under his bed. B, he is afraid of loud noises at night. 
C, he is afraid of the dragon in his closet, or D, he is afraid of bad dreams. Number four, what causes Simon to wake up his dad? A, he has a bad dream about a dragon. B, he hears a noise in his closet. C, he doesn't want to go to sleep. Or D, he sees a lion under his bed. Number five, after Simon tells his dad about the dragon, A, dad makes him go back to bed. B, um, dad explains why different beasts visit children at night. C, dad turns on the light and sees a dragon. Or D, dad shares the problem he had when he was a boy. Okay, we're gonna turn the page for number six. Readers know that dad is caring because a, he responds to Simon immediately when he wakes him up. B, he gives Simon a hug and sends him back to bed. C, he tells Simon another bedtime story. Or D, he shares his own experiences. Number seven, how are the dragon and the lion alike? A, they both breathe fire. B, they both live under children's beds. C, they both want to scare children. Or D, they are both creatures that are lonely. What words from the book help readers understand the meaning of lonely? A, scary beasts and monsters. B, need a friend to play with. C, live in children's closets. Or D, become friends. Number nine, Simon feels blank when, he, when dad tells him about his childhood experience. A, happy. B, nervous. C, relieved. D, afraid. Number 10, what happens last in the story? A, Simon hears about his dad's lion friend. B, Simon goes to bed filled with excitement. C, Simon wakes his dad because he's afraid. Or D, Simon worries about the dragon in the closet. To number 11 is your extended response. If you were Simon, how would you have solved the problem in the story? I want you to write that on the back. How would you have solved having a dragon in your closet and being afraid? See if you can figure that one out. Um, and then we're going to move on to phonics. Okay, so for phonics, we're doing the same type of highlight thing. So get your highlighter ready. Um, we're going to read the sentence and highlight the long vowel teams. So this time we're looking for A, I, E, E, O, A, E, A, and I, E. Okay, once again, you're going to highlight all of those. Then you're going to write three examples under each of these. All right. So pause the video and do that and then come back for our animal research report. Okay, so if you're ready for animal research report, it looks like this. You've been researching your animal all week. Now it's time for you to write your report. So for this, I want you to tell me all about your animal, whether that is a turtle or a penguin. I want you to write all about it. So start with, I chose whatever animal you chose, okay? I wanna see all of this stuff filled up. I want you to write so much about your animal that I know a bunch of stuff that I didn't know before because you wrote your report, okay? So I don't care about spelling, okay? You don't have to go ask your parents every time you need to spell a word. Just do your best in spelling, it's okay. One thing I do want you to focus on is capitals and periods. Okay, make sure you start your sentences with capital letters, end with periods, exclamation points, question marks, whatever you need, but use proper punctuation, okay? Um, when you're done with that, I've linked a Saddleback Kids episode um, for you guys to watch. I think this one is, might be the last one in the Miracle series. We might have one more. Um, and then I would like you to finish up your assessments on Splash Math if you haven't already, and do some... Headsprout, and that should be it for today. All right, bye.